Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, Russian military action has continued to immeasurably tear apart a previously peaceful and prosperous nation. The war has killed 10,000 Ukrainian civilians and left millions without access to basic resources. Are Russian soldiers who make this widespread sorrow practically possible to blame? British lawyer Wayne Jordash argues that Russian-led sexual violence in Ukraine is caused by a culture within the Russian military that glorifies aggressive methods of intimidation. Often, Russian commanders are aware of their soldiers' crimes and in some cases, according to Jordash, encourage or even order them. The 1971 Stanford Prison Experiment, or SPE, was a controlled social psychology study that exemplified the impact of social pressures on the morality of individuals. Creating a mock prison environment, the SPE divided 24 young men, judged to be mentally healthy, into groups of prisoners and guards. Prisoners were subject to indignation, while guards were left to independently manage the situation. Less than a week into the experiment, many guards became cruel and tyrannical. SPE's hierarchical power structure that perpetuated oppression beguiled previously innocent young men into abhorrent moral decision-making. Here, circumstance alone could turn previously good people bad. And this was just an experiment where participants must have been somewhat aware of the fallacious nature of their situation. In the Russian military, where social pressures are in fact real and tangible, it seems to slip into immorality would be even easier. The SPE proves that situational forces can dangerously combine with group dynamics to make monsters out of decent men and women. This parallels the situation within the Russian military. Lawrence Kohlberg's theory of evolution seems to further absolve soldiers of individual accountability. Kohlberg argues for six stages of moral reasoning, which he classifies into three groups, pre-conventional, conventional, and post-conventional. During the conventional period, which spans early adolescence to adulthood, Kohlberg argues that good people are more likely to do bad things because of tension between societal expectations, external pressures, and the evolving nature of all morality. Overall, Kohlberg concludes that it takes time and age, even for a good person, to form principles strong enough to defy external pressures. The age of a Russian soldier ranges from 18 to 30. Therefore, Kohlberg's conventional period directly applies to them. Russian soldiers fall into an age category where they are morally the most impressionable. On the more theoretical side, some thinkers have argued for the existence of a hypothetical contract, or the covenant, between the citizen and the society, in which the citizen must follow the rules of the society laid out for the greater good of the whole society, or is known as social contract theory. Individuals therefore have an implicit yet inescapable moral obligation towards the social and political institutions that arise from this contract. We can see how this could link to some of our case studies, like terrorism, in which the offenders may really just be morally righteous autonomous agents, but from a differing society. Let's now assess whether the argument that societal pressures influence behaviour, perhaps absorbing personal moral responsibility to some extent, holds true scientifically. Peer pressure has the ability to generate a stress response in us, resulting in the release of hormones such as cortisol which can indirectly lead us to conforming with accepted norms. An experiment carrying out acute tryptophan depletion which lowers serotonin proves this. This, of course, stems back to an evolutionary advantage of humans wanting to be accepted by others. You're safer with the pack rather than being by yourself. The prefrontal cortex, an area of the brain which controls planning and perception, is still largely underdeveloped in adolescence and often completes development during a person's mid to late twenties. This makes younger people more susceptible to social influence. Of course, an adult, such as these soldiers, have far more autonomy than a child, but they're still susceptible to their weaker medial prefrontal cortex and left and right temporoparietal junctions. But, of course, this does not warrant an excuse for any wrongdoing. Overall, these soldiers were irrefutably immoral in their actions but whether they are totally responsible for them might be subjective. In debates like these, we should revert to established laws, which outlaw the individual aggressive acts of Russian soldiers regardless of moral debate.